My name is Steve Widmeyer. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Last Supper. So from the time of Moses to the time of Jesus, uh, Jews every spring would gather together to celebrate their freedom from slavery in Egypt during uh, the festival of Passover. Uh, these things were laid out for them in the Torah and the books of Exodus and Leviticus. They were commanded to remember all the events that God used to save the people. So when Jesus told his disciples to go prepare for the Passover, to prepare for the meal that they would eat together, this was something they had probably done their whole lives growing up. And so they, they found the room. Uh, they probably would have had to clean it to make sure there was no yeast in there. There were certain foods they would have to get because the first night of Passover, the family, the Jewish family would gather together and eat what's called the Seder. Seder means order. There was an order to the way things were supposed to be done. Uh, you had to eat bitter herbs to remember the bitterness of slavery and uh, have salt water for the tears that were shed. And, and all these things had to be done a certain way. And so the preparations were made and the disciples gathered and Jesus was there with them. Well, this is at the end of Jesus' life and the disciples, the people that were closest to him, were with him there. And for most of his life, well, the life that the disciples were with him, he was in many ways breaking down their order, their idea of how things should be. Uh, he, he challenged their notions about the law and what the law should be in the Sermon on the Mount when he says, you've heard that it was said, do not murder, but I tell you, if you even have evil thoughts or angry, it's like you've committed murder in your heart. And he's saying it's much deeper than just obeying the, the law. It's, it's in your heart and your motives matter. He broke down their notions of ethnicity and race by hanging out with Samaritans and uh, people that they shouldn't be with, like tax collectors and prostitutes. And so in many ways, he was tearing down the order of how they thought things should be. And when they get to the meal, it makes sense that in some ways, Jesus did the same thing. The freedom that they experienced in Egypt uh, came at the expense of a lamb. Uh, during the actual Passover event, the angel of death passed through Egypt and any household that did not have a sacrificed spotless lamb, a lamb that had to die, whose blood had to be shed in order to spare the children living in those homes, that's what was being remembered. So at this meal, Jesus takes the, the cup of wine. There'd be four cups that would be drinking during the course of this meal. And some Bible commentators think it was the third cup, the cup of redemption that Jesus was holding. He's saying, this is my blood. And he's redefining this Seder meal for his disciples saying, this is, I am that lamb. I am the one who's gonna shed my blood for you. It's gonna be poured out for you. And he takes the, the unleavened bread that they would have been eating at that meal and he breaks and it says, my body is broken for you. It's given up for your sins so that you can be free. So they were, maybe when, the disciples maybe went into that meal thinking we're celebrating that this freedom, this event that the nation of Israel experienced, but it was so much bigger than that, what Jesus was doing. He was freeing all people throughout the world of their sins. Um, freeing them from slavery to the law, from the idea that we have to earn God's love because we can't earn God's love. And so the way he lived his entire life, showing that it's more about a relationship with God, it's not about the rules, it's not about following the order, uh, how things should be done. It's about knowing that we can't do that. We can't do that on our own at least. And we needed Jesus, they needed Jesus, I need Jesus to shed his blood, to have his body broken on our behalf. And so, as we reflect on the cross this week and think about the events that led up to it, know that Jesus was very intentional about letting us know that, that it was all about what he was going to do so that now we can be freed and enjoy life more than anyone else.